Recently, I started playing Expedition 33 Clear Obscure. And even if I'm still at the beginning, it was immediately clear to me how much care went into building this world. One thing that really caught my attention was the City of Lumiere and how consistent and well structured its buildings feel. That usually means there is a strong procedural system behind it, so I started digging. I found an station post where they briefly describe a tool used to generate those buildings. By drawing a line and tweaking a few parameters, you can get a building generated procedurally. The original tool was made in Udini and using a real engine. Of course, I don't know exactly how it works internally, but I wanted to recreate my own version of that tool, starting only from that description, a few images, and a lot of assumptions. And this is how I try to recreate that tool on Unity. Hey, just a quick note. Creating this kind of content isn't easy and takes quite a lot of work. So if you find it useful or interesting, consider subscribing or supporting us in any way you prefer. A like or a comment really helps the video reach more people. You can also check out our Patreon page where we will share the full project with our top tier supporters. All right, I won't bother you any further. Let's get into the video. Before going into the technical side, it's important to understand what this tool actually does from the artist's point of view. The goal is not to model building piece by piece, instead the artist works with a set of modular assets created in advance. Everything starts from a line drawn directly in the scene. These lines represent the footprint of the building. From there, the artist can tweak a few parameters, things like height, the seat, additional models, and so on. Based on that input, the tool assembles those models and generates the building procedurally. At this stage, the result is a collection of modular elements. In some cases, this can already be used as is, but it can also be further edited or exported to obtain a proper 3D model. The important part here is control. Even if the result is procedural, the artist always decides the overall shape and proportions of the building. This kind of workflow is extremely useful when you need to build a large city. It allows you to keep a strong visual identity while still working quickly and iterating a lot. At this point, the first question was, what do you actually know about this tool? The station pause shows the tool in action, with several images and short clips of the generated buildings. By looking at those, a few things start to become clear. The buildings are clearly modular, certain elements repeat, others change based on parameters, but there is a strong underlying structure. The footprint drawn by the artist seems to drive most of the result, and the building models grow around it. This is when the idea of an outline built around the original line started forming in my mind. I also noticed that this outline has a very specific shape. There are no sharp angles, corners look cut by a tangent line, and those corners are always reinforced with columns. This suggests a clear distinction between the side of the buildings and its corners. On each side, there also seems to be very clear rules for model repetition. For example, on the ground floor, when there is enough space, there is a recorded sequence of six models. Window, window, door, window, window, window. Each of these sequences is then wrapped by columns. With that in mind, I try to step back and think about the problem in a more abstract way. Forgetting about the engine for a moment, what kind of system would I need to generate buildings like this? Everything seems to start from a simple input, a line drawn by the artist. So first of all, I need a way to represent that line. From there, a way to generate an outline around it. Then something to notify the sides and the corner of that outline. On top of that, I need a way to place models along those lines and when necessary, constrain them to follow specific rules. And that's just the start, because there are parts of the building, like the terrace and the roof, which are generated as single meshes. Some models can also be alterated to create variations. And in the end, everything needs to be assembled and turned into something that can actually be exported. As we said before, the original system was built in Udini, but in my case, I wanted to recreate the logic entirely inside Unity so everything had to be implemented directly in the engine. The first concrete problem to solve was the line drawn by the artist, so I created a custom editor for my procedural building drawer, and if the user clicks draw, I save the positions of the mouse projecting onto a plane. To avoid collecting too many points, a point is valid only if it is far enough from the previous one. Once the line was captured, the next step was to generate the outline. I started by resampling the row line by a constant distance I defined to make it more manageable. 
Then I expanded it to left and right using the depth parameter creating two parallel lines. These lines form the base of the outline. Since the line can curve, I had to remove any self-intersection and resample again to keep a consistent spacing. After that, I connected the left and the right lines with additional segments to close the outline. At the same time, I added junctions where angles were sharp or at control points I plan to use later for modify the building perimeter. The final result is an outline made of sections and caps, essentially the sides and the corners of the building. Once the outline was ready, the next step was to populate the section with models. On the ground and the mezzanine floors, each section starts with a column, then as long as there is enough space, a repeating rule is applied. Any remaining space is filled with window walls and another column. On the upper floors, this approach is similar. Even if the floor is mostly filled with window wall models, the rule is still applied whenever there is enough space, so the columns align vertically with the floors below. This continues until the top floors which narrow. We will handle those later. Before implementing this concept, we need to define what a model is. A model is a single building piece, defined by its mesh, material and few other properties. Since we render many models and frequently modify the composition, I didn't want to instantiate game objects for each one. Instead I used the Draw Mesh Instance API, which only requires a list of matrices, one for each instance. I've used the same approach in a previous video about the procedural dungeon. Each model is represented by a scriptable object containing all its data, and all models are stored in a larger scriptable object that acts as a container for all the building assets set. This container also provides helper methods to retrieve the current model based on the current floor. And all the models you are seeing here were modeled specifically for this project by Matteo. That's definitely much better at this bar than I am. The concept of a rule is simply a sequence of models, so I can apply it whenever I need without worrying about which model to use. Now, to place the models currently, I needed a way to find the next valid point along a section for each model. There was a small challenge here. Each section can be slightly curved, and models can have different length. I created a method called sampleAlong to calculate position along the section before constructing the matrix for each model. Once the matrix is ready, it's added to the models list. I use a dictionary with the models as the key to sort the matrices so I don't have to search for the list each time. Once all the rules are in place, the sections start to fill up. At first, I focus on visualizing the result, columns appearing at regular intervals, doors ending up in sensible positions, and window patterns repeating consistently along the facade. This is also where small tweaks start to matter a lot. For example, looking at the reference, the models on the central floors have some variation which is probably handled with a seed. Since I already had a helper method to retrieve the wall model for each floor, I only needed to need select the random with a seed and pick a different variant inside that method. If you want to go deeper into this concept, I already discussed it in detail in the procedural dungeon video. I also added the caps which are much simpler than the sides, usually just a single model placed between two cap points. And to complete the main body of the building, I added the balconies. Structurally, they behave very similar to walls, so I didn't treat them as a completely separate system. In most cases, a balcony is just added on top of the existing wall model. On one specific floor, the one above the mezzanine, balconies are continuous, so they are composed of a start, middle, and end model, and placed while the main rule is being applied. The next step was handling the top floors. In the reference, the last two floors don't follow the same footprint as the rest of the building. They are slightly inset, creating a clear step near the top. To handle this, I didn't introduce a completely new system. Instead, I generated a new outline by shrinking the existing one while trying to preserve the same session and caps where possible. This new outline then goes through the same pipeline as before. The penultimate floor is quite straightforward. It's filled with wall window models without applying any repetition rules. Things get a bit more interesting on the very last floor. 
here the focus shifts from placing facade models to building a structure that can support the roof geometry. At each meaningful point along the outline, I place a vertical element, basically a bent vertical bar. Each of these bars has three joints. Collecting them naturally gives me three separate point lists. I then use this list, two at a time, to generate the side meshes of the roof. Since the lists share the same amount of points, one is used for the bottom vertices and the other for the top ones. This gives me the slanted surface wrapping around the top of the building. Once the structure is in place, I can add the horizontal elements and all the small windows models on top of it. Another interesting part is the top surface of the roof. Looking at the reference, the way it is constructed immediately reminded me of a straight skeleton. In simple terms, straight skeleton is obtained by collapsing an outline inward at constant speed, and using the intersections that appear to define the faces. It's a very powerful technique, but also not trivial to implement, and often heavier than what you actually need for a specific case. In my situation, I already had some useful information. In particular, I already knew the medial line of the roof. So, instead of computing a full straight skeleton, I collapsed the outline toward the medial line, tracking the first intersection as they appeared. When an intersection got close enough to the medial line, I snapped a rectangle into it. This process created a set of segments that already described the roof structure quite well. From this segment, I extracted the individual cells, and from there I could generate the faces and triangulate them to build the final roof mesh. It's not a general straight skeleton implementation, but it's behaved very similar for this kind of geometry, and gives me more direct control over the specific result I needed. Just below the top floors, there is also a terrace. From a procedural point of view, this part is actually much simpler. Instead of shrinking the outline like I did for the upper floors, here I expanded it slightly to define the terrace perimeter. From this new outline, I generate a simple mesh for the terrace floor without any complex processing. Corners are handled with dedicated corner pieces which are basically tiny columns, and the rest is filled by repeating the railing segments, using the same logic I already used for the walls and balconies. So even if it looks like a new element, it's really just another reuse of the same tools and ideas applied to a different part of the building. When it comes to altering models, I added a system to modify them after they have been placed. This approach mirrors the original tool described in the post I found, where you can place boxes over the facade to transform models. From the editor, you can select a group of models by drawing a selection box. The script tracks all the models whose center points fall inside the box. Once selected, you can either clear the section or apply alterations. When altering, the system first filters the models by floor, then by group, which is defined as a series of contiguous elements. Each model type has its own rule for replacement. For example, replacing a window removes the wall and balcony underneath it. And on the first floor, continuous balconies are updated to close any gaps. Some special cases exist too, like the restaurant model on the ground floor, which also affects elements on the mezzanine to maintain the correct decorations and openings. Finally, after all models were placed and the additional elements like terrace and roof were added, it was time to export the building. I started by combining all the meshes into a single mesh using the Unity's Combine Instance system, keeping a sub-mesh for each model to preserve the correct materials for all elements. Then I created a new temporary game object, assign the combined mesh and materials, and use the Unity's FBX exporter package to generate a proper 3D model. Keep in mind that the resulting model is quite heavy. In real production, you'll probably handle it differently, simplifying materials for external tools, or even just using the model licenses like we did during the creation. After finishing this project before even starting the edit, I went to the Unite, where I met a lot of friends, including Matt from Game Dev Guide. He told me he'd also work on procedural building generation in Unity using a spline-based approach. His work is always super clear and well explained, and even though the solutions are different, the problem is very similar, so I definitely recommend checking out his video as well. 
Recreating this workflow completely in Unity wasn't easy and required a lot of work, but it was a really fun and rewarding challenge. It gave me a chance to dive deep into the procedural generation, think carefully about modular workflow and experiment with solutions for different building elements. Of course, there is still room for exploration, adding more variation, optimizing performance or expanding the system for different building styles. I really hope you found it interesting too. If you did, please consider subscribing. Let us know what you think of the project in the comments below, follow us on the other socials and don't forget to smash the like button. You can also support us on Patreon, where we share exclusive content and resources from our projects. See you next time. Cheers.